Birds and butterflies add so much to our landscape, and they're certainly a joy to have in our garden. By offering them food, water, and shelter, we have more of an opportunity to keep them around. And at the same time, we can provide valuable habitat when so much of it's being lost elsewhere. Birds are welcome in my garden any time of the year, but I particularly enjoy them during the fall when most of the blooms are gone. They can be so much fun to watch, and their songs are always pleasant to hear. Now, I'm not alone in my enthusiasm for the birds. Every five years since 1980, bird seed sales in this country have doubled. In a few moments, I'll give you some tips on how to attract birds with some easy feeding techniques and we'll visit a well-known expert who really knows his hummingbirds. Then I'll take you to New Orleans to visit a couple of wintertime destinations for those winged travelers from the north. We'll visit the Callaway Gardens Butterfly Center to feast your eyes on another winged beauty. We'll look at some plants that will help draw butterflies and birds to your garden. When the leaves turn their brilliant colors and the harvest is in, the emphasis in my garden begins to change. You know, I figure this time of year is one of the best times to start feeding the birds, and I'll feed them right on till spring. Once I start, I don't stop because they come to depend on me. The further we get into winter, the less plentiful food is, and I try to do everything I can to help. Feeding the birds just makes good sense when you think about how much of their native habitat has been destroyed either through our encroachment or natural disasters like wildfires. Let's take a look at different ways to feed the birds and foods that they like. Now, certain birds like certain foods. Let's say you're interested in attracting songbirds to your garden. You may want to try thistles because many birds like that particular seed. If you do, since it's so expensive, you'll probably want to try a thistle feeder. These black oiled sunflower seeds are a little more affordable but equally attractive to songbirds, like these beautiful American goldfinches. Cracked corn and millet attracts sparrows and jays, but if you're not fussy about who comes to dinner, you might just pick up one of these mixed bag of seeds. There's a little something in here for everyone. With the increased popularity for feeding the birds, specialty shops have popped up to meet the demand. They're basically delicatessens for birds. You can't imagine all of the different foods. For instance, this one is called birdola. It's like a bird granola. And all of these are different types of suet cakes, basically a bird food made from beef fat and other things. For instance, this one is made with almonds. And here's one that's actually packed with insects. And this one called fruit cakes is made with papaya and orange. Now, the reason for all the variety is that each one of these attracts different kinds of birds. But I have a general recipe that you can make at home, and it starts with a trip to the grocery store. The key ingredient, or the glue that binds these suet cakes together, is the fat trimmed and discarded by the butcher. Most butchers will be happy to give this to you, and some will even grind it up, which will make it easier to use. Other ingredients you'll need, cornmeal, oats, and some peanut butter. I always go for the extra crunchy. And you'll also need bird seed of your choice. To prepare this recipe, Cook one pound of beef fat down until it's in liquid form. Then add one cup of peanut butter, one cup of rolled oats, and one cup of cornmeal, and a cup of your favorite bird seed. Then pour the mixture into a form, any disposable container will do, and let it cool and solidify. Hanging it in a wire cage like this will keep other garden visitors from taking this homemade treat from the birds. There's really no right or wrong time to begin feeding the birds. The main thing is just to do it. Now there's another way that you can feed them that's particularly attractive to gardeners. You can plant things in your garden that are beautiful and the birds love to eat, like crab apples and dogwoods. 
And when it comes to shrubs, you might try something like these gray polys or barberry or roses for their beautiful bright hips in the winter. During the winter, the holly is the plant of choice for many of our favorite birds. You see, hollies like these, which are evergreen, offer more than just food. The prickly foliage can give protection from some of the neighborhood predators, such as cats. All of these dense leaves will shed rain and snow and serve as an excellent place for them to nest. Hollies are excellent plants for our gardens because of their outstanding ornamental qualities. But remember, to produce lots of red berries like these, you need both male and female plants. Generally, one male plant nearby produces enough pollen to pollinate female shrubs, provided there are plenty of pollinators around at the appropriate time, like honeybees. If you want to grow hollies, whether it's for their beauty or for the many ways they can support birds, you'll find that there's a wide range of variety out there. And if you want to encourage lots of those little garden visitors, like robins, wax wings, and flickers, you can bet a few holly plants will always keep them coming back. I got a bird, look. Many people look forward to a trip south during the winter to escape the cold winds of the north and enjoy the warmer offerings of a place like New Orleans. It provides a chance to relax, take in a few early blooms in the garden, and enjoy some southern hospitality. But tourists are not the only ones who take a trip south during the winter. Each year, millions of birds migrate to this part of the country, where the Mississippi River slowly flows into the Gulf of Mexico. The unique habitat found here sustains these visitors until they return to familiar places to nest in the spring and summer. As they're coming south, uh, these areas are extremely important to songbirds. Here at Bayou Sauvage Wildlife Refuge near New Orleans, biologist James Harris is working to ensure this important habitat is not destroyed. These areas are extremely important. There are a lot of them that go farther south into South America, but for a large number of birds, uh, this is the end of the road. They get to South Louisiana, South Texas, into Florida. This is it. Uh, if we don't have the food resources available, uh, they may not come back. They may not live in your yard for six months out of the year. They may not stay in your yard and nest, but they may use your yard for a short period of time, and it may serve as a rest stop for them on their journey further north or further south. An old Chinese proverb states that life begins the day you start a garden. But for Olga Clifton, life began the day she started a backyard sanctuary for wildlife. By using native plants in combination with bird feeders, she has created a home for local wildlife and a unique rest stop for those feathered visitors from the north. I've, I've looked beyond what it does for me and think about what I can do for them. So by doing, like putting in this plant, which is a, su a native sumac, uh, it produces a, a, a berry that the birds enjoy. It's a native plant. I don't have to worry about it. It's also a host plant for one of the tiny little butterflies that caterpillar will serve as a food for uh, migrating birds that pass through. So all of this serves as uh, part of the web of life, so to speak, in the food chain. So I've created various ways to feed birds. You don't just feed birds by buying a bird feeder and a sack of seed, because not all birds eat seed. We have 40 years of life back here. But we have lived here and our yard has evolved into many things from something that looked like the cover of Better Homes and Gardens to a wildlife habitat of what it's turned into now. We have lots of uh, non-native plants, but also lots of native plants that attract birds and butterflies and hummingbirds 
and box turtles and snakes and all kinds of things into our yard. So this is the world we have created for ourselves and we like to share it with other people. A patch of woods like this, uh, like it is now, is extremely productive and valuable uh, for wildlife. Uh, if we come in and put a parking lot here or a housing development or uh, even farm fields, uh, it removes the benefits. Uh, most wildlife can't use it then. Well, when we lose habitat down here, then the birds that normally rest and, and forage and fatten up here can't make it to St. Louis. Without green belts that allow these birds to use them as highways from my area into other areas of the United States, there'll be no more birds. Their numbers are dwindling, and we think it's because of the destruction of habitat. I suppose that most of us would have the hummingbird at the top of the list as favorable visitors to our gardens. They're just so fascinating and entertaining to watch. Attracting them to your garden to enjoy their beauty and humorous behavior can be done by simply planting some of the plants they favor. Or, for a sure bet, you can hang one of these feeders. This way you can enjoy them even more by placing it in a location that's convenient for you to watch. Hummingbirds are attracted to the color red. Now some people actually tint the nectar with red food coloring, but I found an easier approach is just to tie on some of this ultraviolet surveyor's ribbon. You see, hummingbirds are sensitive to ultraviolet light, and by tying this on the feeders, when it reflects the light, the hummingbirds are attracted to it. For the nectar they love so much, there's a very simple recipe you can follow, and I always make an extra amount and keep it in the refrigerator. It just calls for four cups of water to one cup of granulated sugar. Now I bring this to a boil and let it cool before I put it in the feeder. It's important to refill your feeder at least weekly, and when you do, clean it with some vinegar and water to help cut down on bacteria. As the seasons begin to change from summer into fall, hummingbirds start packing their bags to head south. When this occurs, we never seem to be clear if or when we should bring our feeders inside. To get an opinion from an expert, I went to Perk Floyd, who's been banding and studying hummingbirds for years. For people who have several feeders out, uh, some should be brought in, but always uh, leave one or two up for the winter time because we have some hummingbirds that stay over a long time before migrating away, and they need the calories for migrating. And then in addition, we have stray birds that come here uh, which need food. But remember that uh, they must be cleaned every few days because the sugar water tends to sour. We have banded over 300 uh, a year for several years, and we do this because we expect them to come back. And this is what we look forward to, is these birds returning. And when they first arrive, they look for the feeder that they used the year before. In a way, they're telling us, I've been here. Where is it? Uh, but we do this for the very purpose of uh, recapturing the birds to learn how long they live and where they go. You know, it's amazing that some of these little guys can fly up to 25,000 miles in a year. And with all that buzzing around, they generate quite an appetite. Using these feeders and sugar water is great, but there's nothing like the genuine article. The flowers that hummingbirds tend to go for are brightly colored, and many of them are trumpet or tubular in shape. Not only do flowers provide nectar, but they attract insects that hummers feed on. Some of the best trees and shrubs include mimosa, eucalyptus, crabapple, butterfly bush, azaleas, and rows of Sharon. Now everyone loves perennials because they're so beautiful and they come back in the garden year after year, just like the hummingbirds. Favorites include the tall and spiky foxglove, pinstem, and red hot poker. Whether they're annuals, perennials, tropicals, or vines, the hummingbird will find something to sip nectar from in all categories. I planted this honeysuckle about four years ago on my front fence. 
and it's one of the first things to flower in the spring that really get the hummingbirds' attention. They go for these scarlet coral-colored flowers. They love the tubular shape. Coral honeysuckle, or sometimes referred to as scarlet honeysuckle, is actually an American native vine, and it'll really turn their heads. Among the annual flowers you might think about planting, there's morning glory, red salvia, and even petunias. Perennials that are always a favorite include the blooms of hosta, cannas, penstemons, and bee balm. These are just a few of the plants I've grown to entice and feed hummers. This spring, when you're making additions to your garden, don't forget about the hummingbirds. Beauty can take on many different forms in our gardens. There are the more obvious things like flowers, foliage, and scenery, but it can also take on more subtle forms of splendor, like little visitors to our gardens, like butterflies, and there's no better place to see them than at the Day Butterfly Center here at Callaway Gardens. This is like a miniature tropical rainforest, and it's a delight to see so many different kinds of butterflies in one place. I had an opportunity to learn more about these spectacular creatures and this incredible facility from Lou Ann Creighton, a butterfly specialist. Well, the Day Butterfly Center has been here since September of 1988, and basically in building it, we wanted people to have a chance to get to know butterflies. They're incredible insects. The Butterfly Center is about 7,000 square feet of conservatory, and it's the home for living tropical butterflies. So when you step in here, you step into the world of the tropics. I think the most popular aspect is actually being able to walk through and among butterflies. We, we prefer that people don't reach out and touch the butterflies, but it's okay if butterflies touch them. And they often do by landing on their shoulder or landing on their arm. So butterflies are getting to know people as well as people getting to know butterflies. You know, the great thing about a facility like this is that no matter what the weather's doing outside, they're raising these flying flowers 365 days a year for us to enjoy. It's really easy to invite more butterflies into your garden. Think of a sunny location. Uh, butterflies and most of the plants they prefer are sun loving. So think of at least a half a day of sun in that garden spot, a full day of sun would be better. Luring butterflies to the garden can have a number of benefits. Not only do we get these fascinating visitors to observe and enjoy, but the plants we use to attract them can also add a lot of beauty to our gardens. If you want to increase the population of these showy little guys around your place, you need to provide food for two different parts of their life cycle, as larvae, or caterpillars, and as adult butterflies. Now, for larvae, you want to make sure that they have plenty of host plants to feed on. I'm planting a little extra parsley and fennel because they're excellent host plants. Some other host plants that are perhaps a little showier include Queen Anne's Lace, False Indigo, passion flower, asters, and various kinds of sedum. And we certainly can't forget about the old-fashioned hollyhock. It's a favorite food of the larva of the painted lady butterfly. Now, once the adult butterfly emerges from the chrysalis, it needs a different type of plant to attract it. It needs nectar-producing plants to slurp on. You see, adult butterflies use a soda straw-like structure called a proboscis to extract the nectar. And some of the flowers they're most attracted to include Coreopsis, Lantana, Purple Coneflower, and of course, Butterfly Bush. And while we all know what's most attracted to catnip, it's also a favorite nectar-producing plant for our little acrobats of the sky. I can't imagine my garden without lots of birds and butterflies. They help to make the whole gardening experience complete for me. If you'd like to attract more of them to your garden, you can find a list of some of their favorite plants and much more information about them on my website. I hope to see you again next time as we continue to explore the joys of gardening. From the garden, I'm Alan Smith.
this garden I dream of a bed of flowers bluebirds sing of the beauty all around us and every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile No, I can't help but smile